Hey everyone, welcome to Signal Processing with Paul. In this video, what I wanna do is show you how you can plot the Fourier transform of signals here in Python. I think it can be very difficult for people, it was certainly difficult for me to go from understanding the theory to being able to plot these things in a you know, software or code. So that's what we're gonna to try to do. I'm gonna to try to walk you through how to do this and show you some of the difficulties that can come up when you do this. So what I'm gonna do is create a new file and I'm gonna just call this plot FFT and I'm gonna call this a Jupyter Notebook so we can run this code interactively. I'm using VS Code for this and I'm going to choose my Anaconda terminal. It's already set up this way. You can basically look at your Python environments and if you're using VS Code like I am, it'll automatically find it for you. So what I'm gonna do is import numpy as np and we wanna import matplotlib.pyplot as plt so we can actually plot things. So now what I'm gonna do is define x of t as a pulse function. So what I'm gonna do is say num t equals 100 and we're going to say xt equals numpy dot zeros. So we're gonna have a bunch of zeros and I wanna have 100 of them. So I'm gonna put that in there and what I'm going to do next is just say xt from zero to up to nine. So it's not inclusive of this second number. So it's gonna be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, not to 10 equals one. And what we're then going to do is, now I'm gonna just plot the signal. So that's why we imported matplotlib.pyplot. We're gonna just do plt.plot x of t. And I'm just gonna give it a title, plot of x of t x label, now because we don't have an actual x label here, this is just going to be the sample index and plt.y label is going to be the value of x of t. So let's go ahead and plot that. And sure enough, what we see here is this pulse or this box function all the way up to nine and then it flattens out and it's zero otherwise. So we defined it as zero and then we just basically set these guys to be one. Now let's go ahead and plot the f Fourier transform of this or the FFT. So the way to do that is I'm going to say FXT equals numpy.fft.fft. So we're calling the FFT package and we're just calling the simple FFT function and we're gonna pass in X of T. So now we have this, we can go ahead and plot it. So I'm gonna say plt.plot FXT, plt.title, plot of FT of X of T, plt.y label, now this is difficult because remember that the Fourier transform is going to have both real and imaginary parts. And that's one thing that's really important to realize is that you actually are gonna have two plots, one for the real and one for the imaginary part. Now what some people always ask is, well, I'm putting in a real signal. Shouldn't I only have a real Fourier transform? The answer is no. And that's because remember you have even and odd parts whenever you have any signal and all of the even parts get shoved into the cosine term or the real term and all the odd parts get shoved into the sign term, which is purely imaginary. So a signal that is both, you know, that is not necessarily even or odd is going to have real and imaginary parts. So let's go ahead and split this up into two different plots. So the way I'm gonna do this is say plt.subplot, and I'm gonna create a one by two grid of plots, and this is going to be the first one. So first plot is the real part, and we're going to plt.plot numpy dot real, the real part of the Fourier transform, real part of Fourier transform of X of T. So the Y label is going to be the magnitude and the PLT dot X label is going to be the frequency index. And similarly, I'm going to do the imaginary part as well. So this is the second part, which is the imaginary part we need to look at the second subplot. So this controls the index. So it's a one by two. This is the first call of the first, I guess, plot. And this is going to be the second one. So this is numpy.imaginary. And this is plot of the imaginary part of this. So sure enough, I run this. And what we see is we have both a real signal. This is the real part. And we have the imaginary part because our signal here is neither completely even nor odd, it's a little bit of both. And by even is what I mean is x of t equals x of minus t. So it would need to be mirrored across the middle here. Now, one thing that's a little bit confusing about the way this is plotted, and this is just has to do with the way the transform itself is done, is we start at zero frequency, then we go up to halfway, 
And then after halfway, we then jump from the highest frequency we have to the lowest negative frequency we have. So we go up to, you know, basically frequency index 50. And then now at 51, we're now plotting frequency index of minus 50 pretty much. So this can be a little bit confusing because of the way that it's plotted. This doesn't look like our standard sync function that we're used to seeing. So there's this really nifty feature. It's present in MATLAB and it's present here in NumPy called FFT shift. And what that'll do is it'll take this half of the signal and it'll just bring it over here and shift everything to the right. So that way you're looking at this from left to right. You start with negative frequency, you have zero frequency in the middle, and then you have your positive frequency on the right. Same with the imaginary part. So to do this, all we have to do is just type in numpy.fft.fft shift. And I'm going to do that over here. Like so. And sure enough, when I plot it, look, we have our standard sync function. It's completely real, or sorry, it's completely, yeah, this is the real part and it's even as we expect. And then this is the sort of odd part here. Um, this is what we see from the conjugate symmetry. The reason we see this where the imaginary part, the, the positive imaginary part is equal to the negative of the negative imaginary part. And then for the real parts, the real part is basically equal to the negative of the real part is because this signal was completely real. And a real signal is gonna have conjugate symmetry, meaning the real part is going to be even symmetric and the odd part is going to be odd symmetric, which is what we see here. Now what I wanna do is show you what happens when we actually get an even symmetry in the time domain. Doing this the right way will actually cause us to only have a completely real Fourier transform. There shouldn't be any imaginary part. So the way I'm going to do this is rather than setting zero to, to nine to be equal to one, what I'm going to do is say XT from zero to five. So this is going to be zero, one, two, three, and four is going to equal one. And then what I'm going to do is say XT from minus four to the end is going to be equal to one. Now, why am I doing this? What this is going to do is this is going to set 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, so these five elements to be 1. And then why I need to do minus 4 to the end is it's going to be the n minus 4, the n minus 3, the n minus 2, the n minus 1, and then the very last component equal to 1 as well. So this is going to ensure we have the symmetry that we need. And let's go ahead and see what happens when we plot it. Sure enough, notice what we have. This is the imaginary part, and it's pretty much zero. This is one times 10 to the minus 16th, so that's you know pretty much down to numerical precision. And what we have here is a completely even signal as well. Now, suppose our signal was completely odd. That would mean rather than we had one here and then we had minus one down here. So if I plot this, this would sort of be like an odd type of signal. And if we look at the Fourier transform, sure enough, this is what we have. We have zero for the real part and our spectrum is completely imaginary. So remember that distinction between even and odd symmetry that we see here. If our signal is even symmetric, it's going to be completely real. If it's odd symmetric, it's gonna be completely imaginary. If it's a mix of both, it's gonna have both components. But because this signal is completely real, we have conjugate symmetry, meaning the imaginary part the positive part is equal to the negative of the, of the negative part, and then the real part is even symmetric. The one thing to remember is that you're always plotting something that's a combination of a real and imaginary part. Now, if you want to plot this in terms of polar form instead of rectangular form, we can do that as well. So I'm gonna run this back to what we had before. So we have both a real and an imaginary component. And what I'm gonna do is copy my plot except this time I'm gonna plot it a little bit differently. So this is going to be the plot in polar form. Plot in polar form. And what we're going to see here is this, rather than the real part, we're gonna do numpy.ab. So this is the magnitude, the Fourier transform of x of t. And then this is going to be numpy.angle. Luckily, they have a nice little function for this. Um, this is going to be the angle of the Fourier transform of x of t. So this is the angle. And sure enough, when we run this, here's what we see. We see our magnitude. Notice how unlike the previous plot, it's only plot. It's not plotting the sort of negative pieces. It's basically rectified because it's only plotting 
from zero up. And then our angle here, this is what you're seeing. You're basically seeing the phase angle that's due to the rotation. Once again, if we go back to what we had before, where we didn't have, where we had our even symmetry, looking here, or this would I guess be the, the odd symmetry. So let me let me do the even symmetry. Um, you can kind of see the angle. This is basically telling you almost where it changes direction um, to a certain point here. So that's what's being plot here. But part of this is due to the fact that you have this wrap around from minus pi to pi. Um, that's kind of what you're seeing at this particular point. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you found this helpful and I will see you in the next video. Peace.